News Channel 5 Network. This is the plus side of Nashville. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Plus Side of Nashville. I'm Tawanda Coleman, and thank you so much for watching. You know, studies show that children who have at least one consistent caring adult in their lives benefit from lower school dropout rates, less trouble with law enforcement, and are better prepared to build good relationships with their own families. So we're focusing today on foster parenting and youth villages, an organization that helps bring our most vulnerable children and families together. My guests are Ellen Blassing, who's the clinical supervisor for youth villages, and Pam Buck, who's a youth village foster and adoptive parent. Welcome to you both. Hello. Thank you. Wow, I'm so inspired by your story, and we will get to you in just a minute, Pam. But let's start off, Ellen, talking about just foster parenting. You know, it seems like I used to hear so much more about people becoming foster parents, and I used to know several people who were foster parents, but mm -hmm. I'm not seeing that much as mo it, it, anymore. Does that mean that there's is a shortage here in Middle Tennessee of foster parents? Definitely not. Oh, okay. We definitely still need many, many foster parents. Um, across the state of Tennessee, there are over 8,000 kids who are in state's custody, which means they're not living with their biological families. They're living in a foster home, a relative placement, or even you know some higher level facilities. In the middle Tennessee area, we have about 3,000 kids in custody, and almost half of them are looking for a placement. They, they don't have a home to become stable in. So, so we definitely still need definitely parents. definitely still yes. need foster parents. How are they placed with you? How do they come to you? Yes, so DCS, when they have a child that they unfortunately have to remove from a home, they will send a referral out to the different agencies, including us, and we get all of the information about that child, or sometimes it's a sibling group, and we will see if we have a placement that would fit really well with them, either personality-wise or a family that specializes in a certain type of child. And we call up that family and we say, hey, we we have a kid for you, would you be interested? And so we present that, that child to the family and they can decide if it, they think it would be a good fit. And then usually later that day, somebody's bringing the child to that home for placement. Wow. Well, so. you must have called Pam's home at least 11 times because <laughs> we were just, you have adopted 11. We have, yes. Foster 11. children. Let's go back to the beginning. Okay. When did you start uh, becoming a foster parent? 18 years ago. 18 years ago. Yes. And were you just inspired to just <laughs> want to really share some of your love and, and affection with the child? We did. We wanted to make a difference. Um, but I myself was a foster child. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you know exactly what it feels yes. like to be a foster child. Oh, yes. wow. Did you always think that someday I want to become a foster child? I parent? did want to, yes. <laughs> and look at you today. So, okay, you have adopted. Mm -hmm. 11 and I will definitely want to talk more to you Ellen about how that whole uh, transition sort of happens mm -hmm. but um, what do you think is the most rewarding thing about being a foster parent? Um, well just um, you know when you see the children grow yeah. and know that you're there there's a you're there their support and you've been there the whole time and to watch them graduate high school watch them get married and, yeah, you, and you, I have grandchildren. We have oh. six grandchildren. What? From the boys that we've adopted. So, you know, it's, it's rewarding. We'll talk a little bit about <laughs> your, 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 your children because I know you love them. Yes. Um, started out, of, of course, I guess, as foster. You probably didn't mm -hmm. know if you'd be able to adopt them or, or not. But what are their ages uh, and, and, and that sort of thing? Well, it started out, we fostered um, when we were approved, our home was approved. Um, we had three young boys, um, ages 9 to 11, and I didn't understand the terms at the time of, you know, what TPR means or, you know, if they were adoptable. Um, whenever I learned those terms, um, my question was, how can I be their mother? Oh, you fell in love with them yep. immediately. Ellen, that must happen a lot. Um, I, I know for you all, um, a lot of times these children, the main goal is, is to sort of reunite them mm -hmm. into a yes. healthy family, yes. if possible. Yes. Sure. But that's not always possible. Right. But I know that's your goal. Yes, our goal is is always to help these children reunify with their parents. And that's kind of one of the cool things about Youth Villages is we work 
very much from a systems perspective. We're providing in-home counseling for the kids while they're in custody, but we're also working really closely with the foster parents to give them support, and we also work with the biological parents and facilitate visits with them, <coughs> help them succeed in meeting their goals so that ultimately, if it's possible, the children can return home to them. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. what, what qualifies someone? What are you looking for in a ideal foster parent home? Really, someone like Pam <laughs> yeah, who yeah. just wants to help. Yes, with a heart. <laughs> it's like so Pam's. simple, but that's that's yeah, the biggest qualifier, yes. somebody who wants to help and, and cares about children. Is there mm -hmm. an age range or does it matter? There are some minimum requirements. I think you have to be at least 25, yeah. but as far as other things like marital status, whether you rent or you have bought a home, if you have pets, if you have other children, none of that really matters. We like to know that information, but it, none of that would disqualify somebody from being a foster parent. Pam, do you have the children uh, that you gave birth to? Yeah. <laughs> we do, yes. Okay, how yes. many children total do and you have? At, at <laughs> <laughs> we have 13 total wow. children and um, you know my children were young at the time when we started fostering um, like two and three mm. so they, they were really young it, yeah. yes. <laughs> they grew up in it as well and you know I mean that's they count these boys as their brothers that's so how many boys how many girls we only have one girl <laughs> <laughs> and the need I, I want to say the need is is teenage Okay. children you know and I mean we've adopted from the age of one and a half up to 16. Wow and so currently what are the age group of the children that you have in your home now? Well we have some that haven't left so okay <laughs> <laughs> so we have one and a half to 26. What? Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what is the process like uh, then Ellen for I know you're looking for wonderful people like like Pam and <laughs> mm -hmm. her husband and, and her family but but if someone wants to adopt their foster child what is the process like so it's a little bit tricky of a process um, it it starts by a court saying that they've terminated a biological parents rights meaning uh, that unfortunately they weren't able to meet their permanency plan goals and that child won't be able to return to that home, which is a devastating process. We don't want that mm -hmm. for anybody. Um, but if it, if it does come down to it, once those rights are terminated, there's a small waiting period, but then that child is considered available for adoption. Mm -hmm. And the first home that we could, would consider for an adoption would be the home that they're already in. So. So they, if that child was already in Pam's home, we would call her up and say, <laughs> you ready for another one? <laughs> um, and if not, we would start a pretty extensive search to find a family that would be a really good match for that child and is, is willing and able to adopt that child. And we would look even statewide. So. I would imagine that some of the children come to you with sort of emotional types of, of problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you said that you offer counseling services to both <laughs> the parent and to those those children how does that work so like i said that's one thing that we do that's kind of unique as an agency not all agencies do that and and some agencies even will hire other agencies mm -hmm. to provide counseling for kids but we hire those workers ourselves they go to the home they're doing everything from very clinical like trauma therapy with the kids to teaching them independent living skills or mm -hmm. just some basic life skills that they might not have picked up because they were, you may be previously in a home that never taught them that. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, that support that we provide for the foster parents, mm -hmm. I am sure that you had kids in your home <laughs> that you were like, I don't know how to handle this. Yes. And so that, that's part of the support that we provide is helping the foster parents build their skills, but then we also have a 24-7 on-call uh -huh. system in place. So we are truly available to our kids and families 24 hours a day, even on Christmas. Yeah. So we never take a break. <laughs> when you were starting out, Pam, did you think, you know, I'll probably do one child or maybe more? <laughs> yeah. No, we thought, you know, if we can make a difference in just one, just one. And somehow now it's become 11. It's <laughs> 11. Well, well, you said it was a total of 18. Or was it a total of 18 that you've had as foster? 18 years. No, we've had hundreds as foster. Hundreds. Foster and rest of them. Yes. Yes. How, well, how many <laughs> would you say you average 
a per year? How many, you know, <laughs> did you bring into your home in, in any given year? Uh, I mean, sometimes, you know, 15 or 20, if you're counting respites and... What? Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness, you are a saint. I just, uh, okay, we've got more questions um, <laughs> that I would love to talk about with Pam and Ellen about this wonderful Youth Villages because these children do need a loving home and, yes. and Pam is opening her hers up to so many and we want to talk more about if you're interested perhaps in becoming a foster parent, what you need to do, so stay with us. <laughs>